Good morning, Messiah. My name is Ed Dorner, and I want to welcome you to worship today. Such a great time for us to be together as we gather together to worship God. I'm standing out here in one of our community ministries, His Hands Auto Care. It's been a real honor for me to be out here since June to manage the garage and to serve the community, the drivers, the vendors, and all the people that come through here. And it's been such a privilege for us to be able to serve our community in this way. Well, today I have a special introduction. Uh, Mike Sisson is our new garage manager. And uh, Mike, I just want to welcome you to Messiah. Thank you for the welcome. I've enjoyed being at the garage this week and I look forward to meeting everybody. And I would like to welcome you to worship. It's okay to say it. These are hard times. And hard times can divide even close communities. Even us. Exactly when we need each other the most. But this is our prayer. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude toward each other that Christ has. Let's glorify God with one mind and with one voice. Let's accept each other just as Christ accepts us to bring praise to our God. That's what the church does in the same room or all over town. We endure in Christ together. We praise our God together. Find someone, find a way, let's be the church this week. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered. Where Jesus went, crowds gathered, that's just how it was. So that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. So they went there to eat, they went there to be together. And the crowds gathered, pressed on them, uh, filled this place because of the uniqueness of Christ. Who is he? When his family heard about him, and if you read other versions, they'll say um, those related to him or his friends. We understand that these are people that were close to him, family, friends. These are people that, that heard about him, that knew him well, that were close to him. They went out to take charge of him, for they said he is out of his mind. The teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebul. By the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. So the scribes from different areas have been following and listening to Jesus. And now the elite scribes from Jerusalem, they're the cream of the crop. They were known for the most intellectual and religious living, understanding, and guiding of the Israelite and Jewish people. And they saw the miraculous deeds, the teachings, that had finally reached their ears from other scribes, from other teachers. This is what's happening, and so now the big boys come down. And they make this statement. And this is important to understand from where we're going. They say he is Beelzebub. He's from the Prince of Demons. So somehow, some way, they had to explain the supernatural power of Christ. And the only way to do that is one, either admit he's God, or two, admit he's from Satan. They did not want to admit he's God. So what did they say? He's from the devil. Because you can't get miraculous things happening without spiritual influence or spiritual intercessions. How can Satan drive out Satan? If that's what you're accusing me of, why in the world would Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand and his end has come. And he goes on to say, in fact, no one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. If Satan was against himself, 
he wouldn't be able to stand. He would destroy himself, is what Jesus explains to these Pharisees, these teachers. It makes no logical sense. The only real answer is that Christ is stronger than the one he is casting out, Satan, the demons. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. You get that? And I'll tell you other versions say, and every blaspheme they utter. People can be forgiven of all their sins and, and blasphemes they may utter, uh, utter or slander. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an impure spirit. Now this is important to understand. If you come to the conclusion that Christ is of the devil, it is unforgivable because your, your heart is so hard, so stubborn, that you are already gone and you are unchangeable. You've already had the revelation of who he is, and yet then after that revelation, you say, well, then he's from the devil if he can do those things. If he's speaking those things, and that's the conclusion you come with, as the teachers did, he said he had an impure spirit. It's unforgivable. R.C. Sproul says this. He's a great theologian, and this is the truth. Worrying about whether one has committed the unforgivable sin is one of the clearest evidences that a troubled person who has thought that has not committed the sin. For those who commit it are so hardened in their hearts that they do not care about the fact that they've committed it. Blasphemers of the Holy Spirit are so hardened against God that they do not care about sin. So if we are repentant, we can be sure we have not blasphemed the Spirit. Jesus' mother and brothers arrived, standing outside. They sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. And Jesus says, who are my mother and my brothers? He asked. Then he looked at those seated in the circle around him and said this, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. What makes someone a brother, sister, a family of Christ? It's whoever does the will of my father. Luke 11 says it this way. One woman screams out to Jesus, blessed is the woman who gave you birth and nursed you. And Jesus says this, yes, blessed is the woman who gave you birth and nursed. That's what the woman screamed. And he replied, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey. It's the same kind of sentence. The defining character of those Jesus calls family is obedience. Love so undeniable I can hardly speak peace so Unexplainable, I can hardly think as you call.